first tonight, plenty of news coverage of the head of Maine's executive branch of government, the governor and the heads of the legislative branch, the Senate president and speaker of the House. Much less is written about the head of the judicial branch, Lee Softley, who is the Chief Justice of the Maine Supreme Court. Lee Softley grew up in South Portland and then followed an interesting path on the way to becoming Maine's first female Chief Justice. We sat down with her recently to talk not about the issues facing the court, but to get her story, a lively account of how she ended up in one of the most important and influential jobs in Maine. When you were in high school, what kind of summer jobs did you have? I worked in retail. And my first job, I think, was at the surplus store on Congress Street, which you may remember. It's it was right, it now has a oh, food Oh, Monument color. Square. Yes, yes. And I worked at the surplus store. I loved that job. I got to meet uh, every fisherman in the state of Maine because that's where they came for the gear and the lures. And I was this, you know, 16-year-old kid, and they would tell, they would talk to me about what they were doing and why they were doing it. I loved that job. Did you know anything about fishing? Uh, no, this is what I knew about fishing. My dad had a boat and I had to go on this wretched boat every weekend. So uh, I, what I learned during that period of time was that if you put a hot dog on the end of a hook, drop it over the, uh, over the end of the boat uh, off Diamond Cove, you could pull up sand sharks which were mighty looking creatures when you're 13 years old. So I knew, I knew that fishing happened, <laughs> but I didn't know anything about it. Not, until not exactly a master of the sport. No, not, a, not even a tiny bit. But the fishermen uh, were very happy to share, and then they would come in and they'd say, what are, they, what are they running up in Booth Bay Harbor? And I would say, well, you know, they're trying the, and this lure seems to, so, I just had a ball. I loved that job. And then uh, I got better hourly pay when Jordan Marsh opened at the Maine Mall, which was a really big deal for all of Southern Maine. What department did you work in? I worked in ladies lingerie. <laughs> <laughs> you want the details? I don't think you do. Well, so, give me what's appropriate. No, it was, uh, it was uh, actually another terrific job because uh, people would come in and they would talk to you about their lives, their needs, things that they didn't want to say real loudly, and you could help them find whatever it was they wanted. I, uh, I, I loved the work. You know, this is interesting because there are some people who think the judges are kind of in an ivory tower and they make <laughs> law and they don't understand people and they don't understand the problems and the challenges that everyday people face. It sounds as though you had a first-rate education in just dealing with all manner of people. I think you would find most judges come to the job because they like people, because they've they've encountered people in a in a in a million different ways, and they want to help people solve problems. And uh, the, a lot of us are uh, come from very broad backgrounds of this type. Softly graduated from South Portland High School in 1972 and wanted to go to Colby College in Waterville but couldn't afford it. So she went to the University of Maine, and then, after working at a bank, after graduating from college, applied to UMaine Law School. When you went off to law school, did you do it with great enthusiasm, saying, I know I want to be a lawyer, or were you not that firm on your goals? Uh, uh, I need a lawyer appointed to represent me on this one. I just wanted to see what it was all about. And uh, so I'll tell you before you ask the question, I didn't really like law school. Um, I loved some of the professors. Uh, I met a tall, blonde, blue-eyed guy, uh, and, and that went well. So we've been married 37 years. Um, but uh, uh, law school was too um, distanced from people's real problems. So when you graduated from law school, what was your plan? I wanted to get into a courtroom. I wanted to work with clients. I wanted to um, uh, use the, the tools that I hoped I had been given uh, to help people solve problems. After graduating from law school, Softly landed a job at a three-man firm, and yes, they were all men, in Ellsworth. 
Her first day on the job, one of the partners handed her a box filled with documents. And he said, here you go, Dia. These are the titles that need uh, to be searched this week. Um, and what I recall is uh, looking at him and explaining that there was not enough insurance in the world to cover the mistakes I would make if he put me in the registry of deeds for days at a time. I couldn't do it. You needed to be around people. I wanted to go to court. So the great news is they did not like appellate work. And in my first year as a lawyer, I was able to appear in front of the main Supreme Judicial Court three times where my brilliant colleagues, the ones who had graduated at the top of the class, were sitting in back rooms in law firms doing corporate due diligence. I was in the law court arguing. Were you just enormously nervous or did you actually feel fairly confident about what you were doing? Not at all. No, not confident. Uh, You're looking at seven jurists who know the case inside and out and you want to be able to answer any question that they can ask. And what I remember is stepping up in front of that lectern on my first occasion and realizing that my kneecaps were going up and down because I was so terrified. And all I could think as I was doing my opening was, can they see my kneecaps? <laughs> <laughs> now, the good news is I had a chance to talk with uh, several of those uh, jurists afterwards, and uh, they did not recall my uh, quivering kneecaps. Fair <laughs> enough. Well, I mean, did they recall much? How, how late, I mean, much later was this conversation? We've all had our moments of just intense nervousness, but I don't think I've ever heard of anyone having kneecaps going up and down before. That didn't happen on your first 207 night, right? No, I was, I was, I was beads of perspiration, <laughs> but not the, not the <laughs> quivering kneecaps. But I love all the detail, you know, catching sand sharks with the hot dogs for right. bait, and of course the ladies' lingerie at Jordan Marsh. Great but stuff. What an interesting life. She really is a delightful conversationalist, and it's funny because when I sat down to interview the Chief Justice, she said something to the effect of, I don't think this is really going to be very interesting for you or for your viewers. Happily, on 207, I have the authority to override right. her opinion on that matter alone, which is why we will be bringing you more of our conversation with Chief Justice Lee softly tomorrow. Chief Rob Caldwell. <laughs> Still